Hello, and welcome to this informational video for the Yuma County Science and Engineering Exposition discussing this year's inclusion of a separate rubric for engineering projects. I'm Dr. Samuel Peffers with the University of Arizona's Department of Systems and Industrial Engineering. This video is intended primarily for teachers, but is appropriate for students as well. There are two printed products that are helpful as handouts to accompany this presentation. The example poster format and the judging rubric. Engineering projects differ from science projects in a few important ways. Like science projects, engineering projects require both a poster and a paper. Unlike science projects, engineering projects also require a prototype. The most fundamental difference between science and engineering projects is the purpose. Science projects seek to discover or explain how some phenomenon works. Engineering projects seek to apply knowledge of how some phenomena work to solve a practical problem or take advantage of an opportunity to improve something. Because engineering projects are all about either solving a practical problem or improving something, they will all be part product and part process. For example, it might be necessary to separate ferrous metal from non-ferrous metal for recycling. One approach might be to have separate collection containers for the two types. Another approach might be to collect all the metal together, then use a magnet to extract the ferrous metal before recycling. In both approaches, there is a product, the collection containers or the magnet, and a process, collect types separately or separate types after collection. All solutions or improvements involve some of both product and process. Some may be closer to one end of the continuum between the two than the other but all necessarily involve some of both, product and process. In the Yuma County Science and Engineering Exposition, it is very likely that most student projects will be predominantly product oriented. It is the project's product that is prototyped or modeled for the exposition. The rest of this presentation follows the recommended poster format as an outline. The format allows for a logical sequential flow of information and can be used as an outline for the student project report as well. The topic sequence largely conforms to the APA style manual, 6th edition, which is the style and format reference for the exposition. beginning with a project title. The title should be about the problem or opportunity or the solution or improvement or both. The title should capture the reader's attention. It should be informative and complementary of the other information contained on the poster and in the report. For example, the title in this example of a possible high school engineering project. It clearly and concisely conveys what the project is about. The project used as an example in this presentation was not prepared by a high school student. It is purely notional. It is offered as a model of what a high school engineering project might look like. No students or engineers were harmed in its creation. The problem, need, or opportunity statement it should be brief, clear, concise, specific, 
and does not address any particular solution or improvement method. Here is this section of the poster from the example project. Background Research Engineering projects seek to apply what is already known to solve a practical problem or improve something, not discover how something works. As such, students should gather information and or cite authoritative sources both to help define their problem or opportunity in specific measurable terms and to develop feasible solutions or improvements. In this portion of the poster, only a brief summary of the most important points is required. A bulletized list works well. It is not necessary on the poster to cite the specific sources for each piece of information in this section. There is a separate place on the poster for resources or bibliography. In the paper, APA formatting rules for in-text citations and reference list should be followed. Here is this section of the poster from the example project. Criteria and constraints. Whether solving a problem or improving something, the project will have things that it must do. These are the criteria. The project will also have things that it must not do. These are the constraints. Criteria can also be referred to as requirements. Criteria should be stated in the positive, not the negative. Criteria or requirements often begin with the phrase, the system shall. Criteria should be observable and, ideally, measurable. Developing good criteria is critical to the overall success and quality of an engineering project. Eventually, the prototype will be tested to verify that it meets all of its criteria and does not violate any of its constraints. If criteria and constraints are not stated in quantifiable, measurable terms, it is nearly impossible to develop rigorous, legitimately empirical tests to determine if they are met. Here is this section of the poster from the example project. Materials. Think of this like the ingredients section of a recipe. It's important to be specific. List the items, types, and amounts of all the materials that went into the prototype or were used to test it after it was constructed. Any easily readable format works. Here is this section of the poster from the example project. Photographs. Like background research, photos can illustrate both the problem or opportunity and the solution or improvement. Ideally, photos illustrate the prototype at sequential stages of development and testing. Photos should not show any person's face or other personally identifiable features or information. Avoid photos that indicate a particular school affiliation, for example, school t-shirts. Photos which depict the student carrying out sequential steps in the project are particularly effective. Like any illustration, they should include an explanatory caption. Here is this section of the poster from the example project. Design Execution this section is similar to the procedure section of a traditional science fair project. Like materials, this section is similar to a recipe. As in a recipe, there would be an explanation of how each of the ingredients is combined and in what order to prepare the final dish. In this section, students should explain the steps they took to create their prototype and test it. The assembly explanation can be a brief summary. The main emphasis should be on the testing. Prototype testing is analogous to the experimental trials in a traditional science fair project. Just like experimental procedures, 
test procedures should clearly and specifically identify the dependent, independent, and controlled variables for each test. The purpose of the testing is to demonstrate that the prototype conforms to all of its criteria and constraints. As such, the dependent variables are usually directly related to the criteria or constraints themselves. The independent and controlled variables are related to the test conditions. The test conditions should be relevant to the conditions that the prototype is expected to operate under. Depending on the nature of the project, one test could potentially apply to multiple criteria or constraints, or multiple tests could be required to verify conformity with a single criterion or constraint. This is why well thought out, well written, observable, measurable, quantifiable criteria and constraints are so critical to project success. Here is this section of the poster from the example project. Prototype. Ideally, the actual physical model created should be exhibited with the project poster. At a minimum, and especially if the model is not exhibited with the poster, the poster should contain a detailed graphic depiction of the prototype, which clearly depicts all of the components identified in the materials section. It is understood that students in higher grade levels will likely be capable of more sophisticated graphic depictions than students at lower grade levels. For students in lower grade levels, consider using photographs of the prototype which the student appropriately labels. The poster should include the detailed graphic depiction of the prototype whether or not the actual physical model is exhibited with the poster. The same graphic depictions should be included with the project report as an appendix. Here is this section of the poster from the example project. Results, tables, and or charts. This section displays the results of prototype testing. Because prototype testing follows the same empirical construct as scientific trials in a science project, the data display is fundamentally the same. Display should clearly indicate which table or chart pertains to which test. Each table and or chart should have a complete legend and or caption so that the information conveyed is easily understood. Using both tables and charts for each data set is often best. Here is this section of the poster from the example project. Results, discussion. The key point to make in this section is to highlight which of the test results are most important and why they are important. Not why the results are what they are, but why they are important to the criteria and or constraints. If there are any trends or inconsistencies in the test results, these should be highlighted and their importance or lack thereof discussed, but not why they are present. Here is this section of the poster from the example project. Conclusions. The first conclusion should be that the prototype either does or does not meet all of its criteria and constraints. A prototype that does not meet all of its criteria and constraints is not necessarily a failure. This is the section where the student should discuss why the test results are what they are, or suggest further testing to determine why they are what they are. For a prototype that does not meet all of its criteria or constraints, the student should recommend modifications and further testing to meet criteria and constraints. Remember that in some cases it may be appropriate to modify the test. Whatever the conclusions and recommendations, the student should present a clear, convincing, logical argument based on evidence from either the prototype testing or the background research or both. 
If the conclusion is that the prototype has met all of its criteria and constraints, the student should recommend ways to improve or further develop the prototype. Conclusions is the last narrative section in the project report. Here is this section of the poster from the example project. Abstract. In the project report, the abstract is the first narrative portion, as per the APA format. The abstract should be one well-developed paragraph that states the project title, briefly explains its purpose, has one sentence addressing materials very generally. For example, the prototype was constructed primarily from balsa wood, or repurposed disposable household items were the primary components of the prototype, etc. And states the conclusion, did the prototype meet its criteria and constraints or not. On the poster, conclusions and abstract are displayed adjacent to each other. Here is this section of the poster from the example project. Resources. Include a simple list of sources used from the background research in APA reference list format. If a source is not specifically cited in the report or on the poster, do not include it in the list. Here is this section of the poster from the example project. This concludes our discussion of this year's inclusion of a separate rubric for engineering projects in the Yuma County Science and Engineering Exposition. Please visit the Exposition's website for more information about the Exposition and competition, and check back periodically as information is updated from time to time. Thank you for your time and attention.